time to see what's next. Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and this is a very special conversation that I'm having is uh, because it is with Quinton and he heads uh, Epic for India and for those of you that are aware, Epic is uh, the publisher behind and the developer behind the popular game Fortnite and they also have uh, their game engine which is the Unreal Engine. It is one of the most popular game engines used. Uh, it has engines from fighting games like uh, Injustice and Mortal Kombat, even the Gears of War franchises, last two games, Gears 4 and 5 are based on the Unreal Engine. Even the Batman Arkham series are some of the games that are based on the Unreal Engine. And tonight we've had a special reveal of the next Unreal Engine, which is Unreal Engine 5 running on the PlayStation 5. So I'm just going to open the floor to you, Quinton, and please tell us everything there is to know about this new engine and what it's capable of. Right, and so um, thank you for having me, Samir, first. Uh, really excited to be able to speak with Digit and the team. Um, yeah, so uh, we've just an announce of uh, Unreal Engine um, 5. Um, I'd like to clarify first that uh, the one we just released, the Engine uh, 4.25, that was just released a couple of weeks ago, is already uh, next-gen console compatible. Um, and so you can already build with uh, 4.25 uh, next-gen games. Um, but we have announced, yes, for, for uh, next year, the release of uh, Unreal Engine 5. And in Unreal Engine 5, um, we're basically trying to push, uh, you know, photorealism uh, and to push, uh, you know, reality-like uh, experience uh, to the next level. And we're leveraging, obviously, all the graphic capabilities of the new consoles to do that. Uh, in particular, uh, we're driving two new systems, uh, what is Unreal Engine for, uh, 5 Nanite, which is basically a way to uh, virtualize micro-polygon geometry and to free artists and to create much more you know, high-fidelity high um, geometric details, right? So um, that means we can take you know, film quality source art which has been impossible in game right now, and literally, uh, you know, with hundreds of millions or billions of polygons, and they can be imported directly in Unreal Engine now. And then when you, you push them out, so you can work with the highest resolution, and when you push them out to the device, it automatically downgrades to what the device can support, right? So this is pushing the, the polygons. You know, most game developer or, or animators uh, have been traditionally in the last 20 years limited by the number of polygons. Uh, the hardware can handle uh, both on the creative uh, machines and, uh, and on the, uh, the, uh, the display machines. And so what we're trying to do is really taking off those limits and letting people uh, work with reality. The second piece, um, you know, is a bit of an example of what we've done uh, 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 pushing the, the lighting, uh, what we've done with, uh, with RTX and ray tracing. And uh, we have a new system called uh, Lumen, which is a fully dynamic global illumination solution that basically immediately react to the scene and light changes. So, uh, you know, uh, shaders, all of those things, not required anymore. You make any change, the light will automatically adapt and everything. It's, it's pushing the, 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 the RTX type of experiment one, one, one step further. Right. So just to so just to highlight one of the things that you're talking about RTX and this illumination, right? If there is a sun overhead and you're inside a warehouse and you take a gun, for example, and shoot a hole in the ceiling of the warehouse, the light that will come in right now is going to be more realistic and you know give you the feeling of oh this is what it'll look like rather than just being the simulated light we've been That's seeing right. so far. It, what we're trying is to really uh, simulate light the same way light is actually you know propagating, right? and not using shaders and try to adapt and all of those things. We're trying to really reproduce the physics of lights uh, throughout this. So, you know, indirect lighting, reflections, uh, thousands of reflections going in all direction and reheating different zones. And all of that combined with the nanite uh, micro polygon, you can imagine the power of this, right? So we are, we are basically aiming to, towards, you know, film quality, 
uh, con content, you know, uh, um, uh, content to be created in the engine. All right. Okay. Now, uh, of course, as you guys have announced that the engine will be available to developers in 2021, which means we'll get to see games maybe a little later. But another thing that's highlighted uh, in the content is the fact that uh, if someone is developing an Unreal Engine today, they will be able to import their assets to Unreal Engine 5 and be able to, you know, continue development. Can you talk about that transition a little bit? Uh, maybe that will help us see games running in Unreal Engine 5 launch sooner, right? Right, right. So, so that, exactly what I was saying, right? I mean, um, basically, uh, you know, 4.25 is already uh, uh, next-gen console compatible. So people who would be aiming at using and waiting to uh, use uh, Engine 5 to get, um, you know, to get on the new console can already do it today. And it's forward compatible, not backward compatible. So that means the work you've done on, uh, you know, on 4.25 or the next version that will come before that will be totally portable to Engine 5 and you'll be able to convert. Uh, I don't have details exactly on how that happened, but it's meant to be uh, a smooth process and, and not, a, not, not something that will, uh, uh, you know, stress the, uh, the, the development teams. Okay, another thing is that the Unreal Engine is actually used on so many different platforms, not only the current consoles or the next consoles, but also the PC, mobile devices, and uh, the Nintendo Switch, right? So that's, that's quite a wide gamut of hardware that the engine caters to. Right. Uh, Fortnite is, of course, a game that's running on Unreal Engine, and it is available on all these devices, from mobile phones to consoles and PCs. So okay. can you talk a little bit about the scalability that you mentioned earlier, right? Like the fact that uh, developers can import their assets. Uh, how would it be for a developer who's working on a game and let's say they want that game across uh, different generations or maybe different platforms? So only one code, right? And then um, you can just build it for those different platforms. They'll, they'll make a build for each of those different platforms. Um, but it's one single game. I, in the engine is the same game and you build it for the different platform to cater for a different thing. Obviously, there are different changes that you need to do, adapt to the platform when you want to, you know, controllers are different, some of the yeah. navigation are different. So it's a bit of work, but the point is you need to develop the game only once, right? And, and it removes a lot of needs outside of those UI, uh, UX type of thing, a lot of needs to do uh, porting, right? And also, what's more interesting, it's, it's cross-play. Right. Well, what, that's at least what we have done uh, with, uh, with Fortnite, and that leads to the other announcement that we've done today around uh, 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 Epic Online Services, which we we allow crossplay. So, you know, Fortnite was really one of the first games that allowed, uh, uh, you know, PlayStation to play uh, players to play with mobile players and to play with Switch players, etc. And so now it's a little bit more common, but still quite rare because it's difficult to do. It's difficult to integrate um, and and to you know, not only port, but then connect. Uh, the platform are, are used to their wall garden type of approach. And, you know, this has been, uh, you know, they've, they've very uh, kindly open to us because of the success of Fortnite. And we're trying to make that, uh, you know, uh, more more available to other developers. It's been about 500 games developed uh, on, on Unreal, published, uh, that were developed on, uh, on uh, right now. All right, that's great. So, uh, like you said, cross-platform play is something that is not very common between, let's say, a PS4 and an Xbox One today. Right. And, um, I mean, there were a lot of stories as to how maybe Sony was a little uh, reluctant to open it up initially, and then because of the fan feedback, they kind of opened up, and we have a few games that do run on cross-play. But with this initiative that Unreal has taken, uh, giving developers the ability to, you know, implement cross-play through the engine, do you look at cross-play being just another function that gamers can take for granted in the next generation? Because this generation, it's not that common, right? Um, no, we just think that, you know, it's a lot more fun to play together, right? And um, yeah. so, so being able to play a cross-platform, um, you know, makes, makes just the game more fun rather than having all those platforms isolated. Um, and so we, we continue to push that. We believe in cross-play, cross-platform, um, you know, and we think that that's what will re really support uh, the growth of, of, uh, of something, uh, uh, you know, like the metaverse where uh, incremental games will start connecting together and you'll be able to carry your asset across them, uh, etc. Your, your, you know, your, your ranking, your name, your IDs, etc. So we think that's just uh, steps toward all of this, you know, being a big, a big, uh, a big metaverse. 
All right. Now, now I know you've told me that you cannot talk details about the next gen consoles, but uh, I have to ask because our viewers always want to know is the fact that the PlayStation 5 and Xbox, both of them have had their own uh, sort of events where they've highlighted their specifications, right? They've come out and said they're running on an SSD. Uh, they have uh, Zen 2 cores. They have the RDNA 2 GPUs. All this hardware is just what we've heard about. We, we are yet to see actual games running on these systems. So I'm just going to leave it open. What can you tell us about, uh, with, about the Unreal Engine 5 on these uh, consoles? Well, you know, we work with uh, with all of those console guys uh, on an ongoing basis and very early. It's very important for them to have games when they launch their console. And we are one of the, uh, you know, one of the few engines, uh, open source engines. So we are involved very early in the development of the console and on making sure that our technology works with it. Um, you know, and we want to keep the, the surprise as to be theirs, right? Um, <laughs> but, but I think you will, you will see, uh, uh, you know, some of... Uh, of the experience uh, built on Unreal, uh, running on, uh, on 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 PlayStation 5 um, as early as as tomorrow, right? We will we'll, we'll be will be showing some some nice things. All right. Okay. Um, another thing uh, that I have to ask also revolves around uh, the evolution of this Unreal Engine. Now, uh, a fun story is when I watched a couple of developer interviews for a game like Days Gone, which was a PlayStation exclusive, and the fact that you're commuting on a bike throughout the game, and how uh, you know the development team at Sony Bend had to kind of you know work with the Unreal Engine, customize it a little bit to get a motorcycle running the way it should in that engine. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, there are so many different games, be it a third-person action game like Gears of War or a fighting game like Mortal Kombat or an action game like Batman, you know. I'm pretty sure developers have given you a lot of feedback as to what they'd like to see in the engine. Mm -hmm. So any fun story or anything that you can share with our audience that has left an impact on Unreal when they work with these developers? Well, I think what's really interesting is that, you know, I mean, game is our... Is our is our bread and butter and since the creation of the company um, and there's lots of I'm sure the our developers have lots of fun story what I find very interesting is that because we've made this uh, uh, you know unreal uh, uh, open source we've put it on github and we maintain the code there actually a lot of people that are not from the game industry have started pick up the engine as a tool for 3d visualization in many many industries so the most interesting thing I think is to see how game technology is 3D visualization and a platform which allows to bring data and content from all different sources can actually be much more than a game engine. It becomes really uh, a, a cross industry uh, metaverse creation tool, right? And so we see today, uh, I don't know if you've seen the article on The Mandalorian, um, you know, we see massive virtual sets where actors who had to act on blue screen, on green screen uh, in the past, um, now can be literally immersed in the environment on another planet and all of those things. So um, I think what, what fascinates me the most is really how um, the communities, the, you know, whether it's in architecture, uh, to do walkthroughs of building, or whether it's in, um, in, in movie making, like I mentioned in virtual production, how this whole uh, immersive 3D uh, a trend is changing everything we do. Every creation process, uh, maintenance, maintenance, training is all starting to be uh, le to leverage this technology. And so I think that's really the exciting part. I mean, games are always super exciting, but you know, to see that game technology is now permeating every other industry and literally creating a transformation that I think is as important as the first wave of digitization when people move from analog creation to digital creation. I think this is really the next step and it's moving from, you know, a flat digital environment looking on our screen like you and I are working together to a really immersive, collaborative uh, 3D, uh, uh, you know, uh, type of environment. And I think that, that's really the exciting part and that's really what's enabled. You know, we could both talk with Avatar with what's coming on, on, uh, on uh, Unreal Engine 5 uh, with what we're doing, the work we're doing on digital human, on motion capture, on uh, AI and on VR, you and I will be in the same room in five years or feel like we're in the same room even we are not, right? So that, I think that's really what, what gets me excited. And obviously that will happen in games as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first it was uh, games are trying to mimic movie technology and now That's movies right. are using video game technology, how That's the tables right. have turned. That's right. And you can imagine in the movie space, like the change is absolutely dramatic, right? Because uh, traditionally, you know, a bit of pre-production, you shoot and then you do well of the work on the post-production. And now you're able to see everything in advance, do pre-visualization to look how things look technically. You can prepare your shot, you can reduce your time uh, you know your time, your time to market, and your time in studios, and your time with actors, and you just raise the bar and and increase uh, increase the the quality there. So a lot of a lot of excitement in that space too. Absolutely. So those were all the questions that I had. Is there anything else you'd like to highlight that we may not have spoken about in this conversation? Well, you know, a couple of things I think that are really important that we announcing similar at the same time than that is first that. You know, we we our business model is uh, is royalty based, so we ref share and we share the success of our of our of our users. Um, but we realized for a lot of small indie game developer, uh, it was a bit tough to start paying us royalty from the beginning. So we've raised uh, we or we've waived the first uh, the the royalty on the first one million dollar of revenue, which you oh. know should should allow a lot more uh, small company to adopt comfortably uh, Unreal. Uh, to develop smaller game, uh, you know, and and we wanna we wanna make sure that you know they do that and and they don't feel burdened by uh, by our royalty uh, from day one. Um, and the other thing is that, as I mentioned earlier, you know, Unreal Engine is the game itself. There's a whole bunch of services for Fortnite under whether it's payment, leaderboard, matchmaking, lobby, all those functionality that you play on online games on m multiplayer online games. Uh, that we now also trying to put out in the market. So we are going to take a lot of those things we've been successful at with, you know, Unreal, uh, having you know hundreds of millions of users, etc. And we are um, putting all of these uh, uh, those um, those services, uh, leaderboard, achievement, lobbies, um, across platform, available uh, for users. So you can imagine a lot of people would be hesitating uh, to move. On additional platform because it's a lot of work to port, but then also to connect to that platform, etc. We are trying to make that out of the box as well. So there's going to be, um, you know, Epic Online services launching at the same time here. So those are, I guess, the two other news that I think are important for game developers: uh, reduction, uh, you know, wave of the first uh, of the royalty on the first million dollar of uh, game gross revenue, and then the Epic Online uh, uh, services that will allow them to. Uh, go cross-platform, cross-play much faster than they would have been in the past. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. This was an absolute pleasure to have this conversation with you. Thank you, Samir. The pleasure was mine and, uh, and uh, you know, looking forward to our next chat. Absolutely. And for the rest of you that are watching this at home, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more information about gaming news and to read all the details of the Unreal Engine 5 that were announced. You can log on to digit.in or click on the link of the story in the descriptor below. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now. It's time to see what's next.